Recently, I had a video reviewing and comparing 10 different travel purses, and I had an overwhelming amount of people in the community ask how and what I actually pack in my everyday travel purse. So today I am sharing my 12 everyday travel touring essentials and how I pack them in this regular sized travel purse. Let's go. Today, I'm gonna show you how I pack all of this into one pack safe purse, which is the one purse I ultimately decided to keep after doing the reviews of all the other travel purses. If you haven't had a chance to watch that video yet, I'll have it listed down in the description below so you can check it out after you finish this one. Also, if you're interested, after I show you how I pack my travel purse, I'll be sharing a sort of non-travel related project I have been working on behind the scenes at the end of the video. We're gonna start with the bulkiest item and that is my packable rain jacket. This thing is a must have no matter where you are traveling and really, really useful during almost any season. Not just for rain, but for those slightly chillier or foggy mornings like we had up on Mount Mitchell a couple of weeks ago. And as you can see, the raincoat stuffs nicely into its own pocket and becomes a little packet that easily fits into the larger pocket of this purse. The next bulkiest thing is also for rain. <laughs> it is a small compact umbrella because sometimes a rain jacket just isn't enough protection, especially if you get caught in some monsoon torrential, torrential downpours like we did in Japan last year. I really could have used this umbrella when I was traveling there. This was something I added to my essentials after I came back from Japan last year, and I, I'm very glad that I have it now. And this again, easily fits down into that larger pocket in the pack safe purse. A water bottle is my next essential because as I get older, I'm finding it more and more important to stay hydrated when traveling. And sometimes you're not always in a spot where it's easy to find water to purchase. And you really do need to be drinking more water throughout the day, especially when you're traveling, not just drinking water at meals. A lot of times when you are feeling lethargic, or headachey when you travel, it is because you are dehydrated. I know I'm getting I'm kind of getting on a soapbox here, but you are probably walking a lot more than you do at home. You're in a different climate. You're eating different foods, not to mention how much air travel alone will greatly dehydrate you. I love this collapsible water bottle. If you've been here a while, you've seen it so much in my videos but I use it daily when I am traveling. And if I have a fridge in my room at my destination and the tap water is safe there, I will just fill this up with tap water and then put it in the fridge overnight so it is ready to go the next day. Or if not, I'll fill it from the water pitchers at the breakfast bar in the hotel. Many places you stay in you know, areas like Central America will have large water dispensing systems in the hotels or Airbnbs for you to use to fill up your water bottles. And this one is BPA, BPA safe. And because it has the wide opening, it is really easy to get in there and clean all those little folds where it does fold up and become collapsible. Whoops. <laughs> I swear it does easily. There you go. <laughs> and then it just slides right into that big pocket on your purse. Obviously, if it's filled up, I'm not carrying it in my purse. I'll be carrying it around in my hand. But once it's empty or, you know, you just want to carry it with you to be able to fill up later, it easily fits into your purse. The next bulkiest thing is this double glasses case that I use to carry a pair of readers in and a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> Just like I have found with like the rain jacket, you can never go wrong bringing a pair of sunglasses with you no matter what the season is. My current favorite sunglasses are these. They're called blenders and they are so lightweight and I love the tortoise shell. I mean, it's it's such a great um, pattern for sunglasses and you can dress it up or dress it down. But mainly the reason I like them is because they do a great job of protecting my eyes. And of course, I always need to have at least one pair of readers, if not a couple. In fact, I think I'm at the point 
that I'm probably carrying two or three pairs of readers with me on every trip because just like at home, I will be walking around and I don't know where the hell I've put my, my reading glasses and I can't see my phone. So I do travel with a few different pairs of readers. I love this case because it's nice and soft and flexible, but it's very padded. So it will protect both your reading glasses and your sunglasses. I don't think it's a magnetic open, but kind of like a metal opener here. And then it's also got a little cleaning cloth that is attached to the inside of the case. And it has a little hook here. So if you needed to like hook it on the inside of your purse on one of those like little keychain hooks, you could do that. Or if you wanted to hook it somewhere else. And then let me know what, uh, what other ways you would use this hook on the back of the reading glass case. I would be interested to know. I don't think I would carry this around on the outside of my purse with a carabiner or anything, but I'm curious what you guys would use this little, this little D ring for anyway. Yeah, it's, it's really cute. And it comes in a bunch of really fun patterns and colors for this. And I don't, I want to say it was less than $10. It's definitely been a great addition to my essentials. Then we have my phone with this ingenious magnetic tripod case. This case in tripod is easily one of the most used new travel products I have purchased this year. It helped me take these videos when we were hiking a few weeks ago. The hardest part of using this tripod is finding the right rock or stump to set the phone up on so that it doesn't, you know, it doesn't tilt over. I love that you can use it both vertically or horizontally. So you can watch movies on your flight with your phone set up on the tray table and take those vertical videos and pictures for Instagram or TikTok. <laughs> and it's available for both Samsung and Apple phones. No discrimination here. Unless you're traveling somewhere like Seoul, South Korea, where the Buses have free internet and USB charging ports available, and you're constantly using your phone for pictures, videos, and probably directions, you are going to need something to keep it charged up. I love traveling with this magnetic charger because it will charge up my phone to 100% at least one and a half times, depending on how much I am using it. But it's also convenient because I can keep using my phone while it is charging and the magnetic charger is attached to the phone. And then it frees up my charging port and that's available in case I need to use it for a microphone or some other accessory. Plus this magnetic portable charger takes up a lot less space than some of my older portable chargers. And of course you need something to carry your money and credit cards around in. And my favorite is this Buffway RFID protected wallet. Now this purse does have a whole pocket on the inside that is RFID protected too. But since I don't always carry this one purse, I do like to have my wallet that is protected at all times. And I love how bright this one is. It's so easy to find when I'm looking for it down in the depths of the purse. Now for the wallet, I am gonna put it on this outside pocket on the purse so that it is easier to get to. I've put all the bulkier stuff on the, on the inside bigger bucket pocket. And then I'm going to put the, the rest of the smaller stuff is probably gonna go in the smaller pocket on the outside. A new addition to my everyday essentials is a stick of sunscreen. This year I have been treated for two different kinds of skin cancer and I'm currently undergoing radiation treatment for a, a spot that's here on my chin. And I have a video that's gonna come out later kind of talking about my skin cancer journey. But I do always wear a sunscreen, um, a tinted sunscreen as my foundation. And, you know, that is what I wear daily. But after a long touring day, that can get, you know, I can sweat it off or it just kind of gets rubbed off. So I like having this stick to be able to give myself a little bit of extra coverage when I need it. We also could have really used this last year when we were doing a, my daughter and I were doing a marathon tour day in Kyoto and she ended up getting very sunburned on her shoulder. So, so sunscreen is definitely in my purse now for, you know, going to be an essential forever, I guess at this point. I do like this Elta MD stick. It is white, but it actually goes on clear. So it goes on, um, you know, it'll go on kind of clear, 
or I'm sorry, it'll go on a little bit white, but then it it actually ends up being clear once it's on your face. And it's it's just a nice little roll on uh, applicator, which is very simple to use when you're out and about. Another must have for me now is this little pill case that I always carry with my allergy meds. I have like some leaves, some ibuprofen, some Dramamine, just in case. I've had far too many instances where I've either had a sudden allergy attack and I couldn't find allergy medicine for a while and it was just miserable, or I've been on bus rides where I had no idea how curvy and bumpy and uh, just uh, motion sick I was gonna get on those bus rides. And that is why I carry a couple of pairs of these anti-nausea wristbands in my purse now too. They worked incredibly well on all of the bumpy, curvy bus rides around Ireland. Definitely, definitely a must have for me to have in my purse from now on. And they take up so little space, I just slide them into one of the interior pockets in the purse, in the bigger bucket uh, pocket. I'll slide them down into one of those little pockets in there because I don't, it's not like something I'm going to need quick access on a regular basis. They, I will definitely know when I need to pull these anti-nausea bracelets out for sure. For those days that you might be overworking your feet, especially if you decide to travel with shoes that aren't quite broken in yet, and I, even as a seasoned traveler, I've kind of done that before, I always have a few blister pads in my purse. Even when I'm wearing shoes that are totally broken in, and have traveled with me multiple times, there are occasions when the elements are just right for a blister to form. These blister pads have saved me from misery more times than I like to admit. I do have a tiny little old Altoids case that I carry them around in. So I just, you know, I have a few of different sizes in here. So, you know, I'm ready to go. And lastly, one of my addictions, lip balm. I hate the feeling of my lips getting dry, so I like to have a lip balm or two easily accessible to me at all times. Sometimes I'll throw in a lip liner and lipstick too, but as long as I have one of these tinted lip balms in my purse, I am ready to go. I love these tinted lip balms from Cleganic, and they come in a pack of four different shades. They actually do give your lips a really good color tint, and I think they are a much better alternative to regular lip gloss. They really, really make your lips feel moisturized and uh, just, you know, they just feel really good during the day and you look good too. <laughs> Everything is now in this one purse that I think is the perfect size to tour around a city or historic sites all day. Much easier to carry and perhaps safer to carry than a backpack or one of the large crossbody purses. Of course, this purse and all of the items are listed in the description and the first pin comment below if you're interested in checking them out. Now for a little glimpse behind the scenes. <laughs> this all started when I decided to get more serious about getting and staying in shape so that I could be ready for any adventurous travel opportunities that came my way. And I do have a big announcement video coming out probably in the next week or so about a adventurous travel opportunity that you guys could join me on too. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that announcement video. I am really, really excited about this opportunity. So, and I'd love to have you guys join me on it. So I will be telling you more about that very, very soon. But back to my goal of trying to stay in shape for travels. One of the ways I wanted to do this was by adding a walking pad and standing desk so I could get in more steps in a day. Well, when they arrived, <laughs> I realized I was going to have to do a serious clean out and reorganization of my office, which is only eight and a half feet by eight and a half feet big. So pretty small as an office goes. I pulled everything out of the office, including the closets. And once the room was empty and cleaned, I started by adding the largest pieces back in first, which 
meant setting up the desk and the walking pad, both of which were, were pretty easy to set up. Then there was some trial and error on where to put certain pieces of furniture to best utilize the small space, but I think it ended up coming coming out really nicely. I decided to frame these pillowcases that I purchased in Peru to add a little more interest to the wall behind me. And I love, love, love how they turned out and that I get to enjoy them more than when they were hidden away in the closet. After using the walking pad for about a little over a week now, I do have a few pieces of advice for newbie walking pad users. First, it does take some time getting used to it. The first few times I got off of the walking pad, even though I'd only been walking maybe 15 or 30 minutes, I felt like I was getting off of a boat. And I was a little nervous given my issues with motion sickness if I would get nauseous trying to type and read while I was walking, but I really haven't had that happen yet. And the second piece of advice is if you want to get credit for those steps, which I absolutely want to see that number at the end of the day, and especially if you are using a Fitbit watch or any pedometer really, you need to find a way to have that tracker on your lower body because usually the pedometer trackers that are on your wrist are you counting the steps based on the swing of your arm. So if you are typing or you just have your hand on the desk, those steps you're taking won't get counted. Because I have been wearing my Hey Dude when I walk on the walking pad, I just take my watch off and I tuck it up into the elastic laces and that that has worked really well. Those are my only two takeaways so far, but I'm sure I'll probably have a few more after I've used it for maybe a month or so. Would y'all be interested in a full video on what I am doing in my regular life to stay fit and travel adventure ready? Uh, you know, let me know in the comments below. And if you have a walking pad, do you have any suggestions on best uses for the walking pad? How to, how to get the most out of having a walking pad in your office? I'd love to hear any suggestions or advice on using a walking pad because I am, I'm a newbie to it. Now that you know what I'm always packing in my travel purse, check out this video next to learn what I pack in my personal item bag for every flight. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have safe and wonderful travels.